the USA are placed under the unified command of Brigadier General Andrews, and he's directing new plans for sky power. This Air Force will eventually consist of a thousand planes, organized, trained, and ready for immediate service, and capable of concentration in any threatened area for the defense of the United States and its possessions. Before their new commander, the battalions of the clouds wing in overhead parade. This is Langley Field, Virginia, stationed for the Eastern Wing and commanding headquarters for all three wings of the reorganized Air Force. In these strategic Virginian skies midway along our eastern coast, the myriads of the blue are watched by General Andrews and his staff. And as they wheel in battle formation here at Langley, they are in easy striking distance of New England, Florida, and the Gulf Coast. And on they sweep to the imaginary defense of Uncle Sam's eastern shoreline. On May 19, 1943, the crew of the B-17 Flying Fortress Memphis Bell was greeted upon returning to England after successfully completing 25 missions over Europe during World War II. They were ordered back to the United States where they were welcomed as heroes and did an exemplary job of helping sell war bonds and raise morale on the home front. However, there's more to the story. It involves another bomber and a great military leader. It's a story of triumph and tragedy. General Charles P. Cabell of the United States Air Force was the head of General Hap Arnold's Advisory Council at the Pentagon from February 1942 to October 1943. The following is from General Cabell's Memoirs, A Man of Intelligence, published in 1997. On 3 May, the day following the Combined Chiefs of Staff meeting, General Marshall called in General Aker just before his departure for the United Kingdom. Marshall requested Aker to carry a message to General Andrews. The message was that Andrews had been selected to command the entire Allied forces that would make the eventual invasion of Europe across the English Channel. General Andrews never received the message. It wasn't until December 1943 the job with the eventual title of Supreme Allied Commander was assigned to General Dwight David Eisenhower. The story of the B-24 Liberator Hot Stuff and her crew is one of historic triumph and tragedy. During an interview in 2005, General Jacob E. Smart, an aide to General Hap Arnold during World War II, agreed that Hot Stuff and her crew were the first in the 8th Air Force to complete 25 missions even though the heralded Memphis Bell B-17 Flying Fortress wears the label. Hot Stuff completed 25 missions three and a half months before the Memphis Bell, but tragedy struck and she and her crew lost their rightful place in American history. Hot Stuff and her crew were ordered back to the United States to go on tour to help sell war bonds. Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews, commander of the European Theater of Operations, was ordered to return to Washington, D.C. He contacted his friend, Colonel Ted Timberlake, commander of the 93rd Bombardment Group, and requested to fly back to the States with Captain Robert Shine Shannon in Hot Stuff. Captain Shannon was unaware that General Andrews was bringing members of his staff and others along with him. Bombardier First Lieutenant Robert Jake Jacobson, co-pilot First Lieutenant John Lentz, 
Sergeants George Farley, Leland Durham, James Craighead, and Grant Rondo were bumped from the airplane to make room for General Andrew's entourage. General Andrews, an experienced pilot, replaced Lieutenant Lentz as co-pilot. Hot Stuff left Bovington Field in England for RAF Prestwick, Scotland to get the latest weather conditions and refuel before continuing on to Reykjavik, Iceland. It was decided a stop at Prestwick was not necessary, and they continued on to Iceland. On approach to Iceland, Hot Stuff encountered unexpected poor visibility due to snow squalls clouds and rain. Captain Shannon made several low passes over Caldadarne's RAF airfield, but decided to continue on to land at Meeks Field near Keflavik. Zero visibility prevented him from landing, so he decided to return to Caldadarne's. But hot stuff crashed near the top of 1,100-foot Mount Fagradalsfall. The tail gunner, Sergeant George Eisel, was the sole survivor of the crash. He received only minor injuries, but one of his legs was caught in the tail section, and he couldn't get out. The aircraft caught fire, and George thought he was going to burn to death, or be killed by exploding ammunition. Heavy rain eventually put the fire out, and he was rescued approximately 24 hours after the crash. CBS World News brings you the world today, presented Monday through Saturday at this same time. American General Andrews has been killed. The text of a communique announcing the accident said, Lieutenant General Frank Maxwell Andrews, commanding general of the European Theater of the United States Forces, was killed late today in an airplane accident in an isolated locality of Iceland. Full information confirming the accident is not yet available. Those killed on board Hot Stuff included the pilot, Captain Robert Shine Shannon. Co-pilot, Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews, who was also the commander of the European Theater of Operations. Navigator, Captain James E. Gott. Radio operator, Tech Sergeant Kenneth A. Jeffers. Crew Chief, Master Sergeant Lloyd C. Weir. Gunner, Staff Sergeant Paul H. McQueen. Civilian, Adna W. Leonard, Methodist Bishop and Chairman of the Corps of Chaplains. Brigadier General Charles H. Barth, General Andrews Chief of Staff. Colonel Morrow Crum, he was a member of General Andrews Staff. Colonel Frank L. Miller, U.S. Army Chaplain, Chief of Chaplains. Major Robert H. Humphrey, U.S. Army Chaplain. Lieutenant Colonel Fred A. Chaplin, U.S. Army. Major Theodore C. Totten, General Andrews Secretary. Captain Joseph T. Johnson, General Andrews Aide. Two memorial services were held in Reykjavik. The first one was held for Captain Joseph Johnson at the Catholic Church of Christ, Landicott. The second memorial service for the other 13 who were killed in the crash was held at the Domi Kircher Lutheran Church next to the Parliament Building in downtown Reykjavik. They were buried in the U.S. military plot in Foskaber Cemetery in Reykjavik on May 8, 1943. In 1947, they were exhumed and returned to the United States. 
General Andrews is buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. In June of 2012, I visited Iceland with the goal of visiting the crash site and recovering pieces of hot stuff wreckage. I was fortunate to find two Icelanders who were familiar with the crash site, Dodi and Oli Martinson. They spend much of their time searching and documenting World War II crash sites in Iceland. The day after I arrived, we were on our way to the crash site near the top of Mount Fagradalsva. Straight ahead, if you look at the sign with the information, the eye, right. the, oh, and uh, the mountain, right behind that's the crash site. How about that? It's that close. Oh. We're starting up the mountain to the crash site. Very difficult climbing. We are here. We're at the crash site. He has a piece of metal right there. All over the place. These Pieces the of the airplane. First, you found on your visit. Wow. This is just the beginning. Amazing, huh? This is looking toward uh, Keflavik International Airport. It was Meeks Field during the war. This is where they tried to land at Meeks Field, but uh, couldn't. And we're heading back to Kaldadan when they crashed into this mountain. This is part of the main landing gear. The dried up wreath was placed on the landing gear by the United States Ambassador to Iceland, Louis Ariega, in 2011. Part of the landing gear that's within the wing structure. You see, this is part of the webs from the... Mm -hmm. That uh, riveting was probably done by women in the United States. And it's a very good job, professional job. Form a search party and, and search the rough ground over here. We know of one piece out there which is fairly big, which has some uh, some letters, uh, some writing on it that, that might be interesting. We're walking in the lava field looking for pieces of the airplane that might have blown down the mountain. And there's a, an engine cowling out here somewhere. Dodie located a big piece of wreckage. So did Oli. B24 does D, aircraft number 51G, engine number 4, top. How about that, huh? Would you turn that around? There we go. On May 3rd, 2013, the 70th anniversary of the crash of hot stuff that took the lives of 14 heroic Americans, a memorial service was held in the Andrews Theater in Keflavik, Iceland. The service included speeches by the President of Iceland, Oliver Grimson, and United States Ambassador to Iceland, Louis Ariega. Ambassador Ariega read a message of remembrance from United States Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welch, and letters were read from members of General Andrews' family. A memorial plaque was unveiled beside a highway near Mount Bagradalsvall, the site of the tragedy. A privately funded monument was dedicated on May 3, 2018, the 75th anniversary of the accident. Lieutenant General Richard Clark commander of the 3rd Air Force, United States Air Forces in Europe, Jill Esposito, United States Embassy, Charge Day Affairs, Ulager Thor Thorsen, 
Iceland Minister of Foreign Affairs, Thorsten and Oliver Martinson, and Jim Lux assisted in the monument unveiling and the laying of the wreaths. Manny Aldez, a family member of Hot Stuff crew member Sergeant Grant Rondo, played taps. A B-52 Strato Fortress from the 5th Bomb Wing out of Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, and a helicopter from the Iceland Coast Guard made passes over the monument in honor of Hot Stuff's passengers and crew. A memorial service followed at the Andrews Theater in Keflavik. After the war, General Andrews was honored when Camp Springs Army Airfield in Maryland was renamed Andrews Field, now Joint Base Andrews, the home of Air Force One. Since then, the accomplishments of this great leader have been nearly forgotten, and the first heavy bomber in the 8th Air Force to complete 25 missions and her crew and those on board who were killed were soon forgotten until now. The purpose of this video is to shed light on the gallant crew of the B-24 Liberator Hot Stuff and their heroic accomplishment, and to revive the legacy of a great American leader, Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews.